Welcome to the third of three videos about interview skills for R&D positions, brought to you by Sally Todd, one of the careers consultants at the University of Cambridge. In this third video, I'll cover how you can present your best self, both in answering questions and in presentations, although not all companies will ask for this. So first impressions matter. Um, you may or may not be handshaking, depending whether it's online and whether we're out of the pandemic or not, but whatever's appropriate. And if they offer an elbow, a hand, whatever, reciprocate, smile, choose a sensible background online, um, don't have lots of clutter and laundry and so on behind you. Dress appropriately, um, that might be smart casual, it might be a suit, um, but be comfortable as well. Show your communication skills. Now, eye contact in person, you actually look at the person's eyes. Um, if it's a panel and you're in person, um, address the person who asks you the question, but it's fine to just glance around at the others and make sure that they're all following. Um, but if it's online, it's the camera that you need to look at. Sometimes it helps to put a post-it note or something just to remind you that's what you need to be looking at. Be positive, be enthusiastic. Um, listen to the question. If you're not clear, you can ask questions back. Um, you can pause to gather your thoughts before you start speaking. Um, structure your answers. We're going to talk about the star structure in a minute. But don't rehearse so much that it sounds learnt. Um, and do use real examples. Focus on things you've actually achieved. Now, just a word for fellow introverts on how to get your enthusiasm across. Try to use examples of situations you've enjoyed or visualise yourself in the job already and enjoying the new projects. You'll be able to get feedback on how well you do this if you come to one of our virtual live sessions or book a one on one appointment. So top tips on structuring an answer. So we've already said it's fine to pause before you go. Make sure that your answer is neither too long nor too short. Um, you're aiming for around two minutes for an answer. Try to stick to just a few good points and have some kind of structure, you know, beginning, middle, summary at the end, if you like. Use real specific examples. Um, when you've finished, make it clear that you've finished so they know to ask you the next question. And think about what is unique about you. Come prepared to make sure you get across your unique selling points. So for some questions where they want an example, the STAR technique can really help. Um, you need to spend least time on the situation and the results because they're specific to that particular situation, but more time on how you reacted, because you may be able to transfer those techniques to a different situation in the future. Think about how this situation is likely to be dealt with in industry and use an example that shows you could fit into their way of working. So here are two example answers to the question, give an example of when you had several deadlines and how you manage them. First answer, I put in more work, staying late and working at weekends. Second one, I had to complete a number of assays for a collaborator, but also had to abstract an abstract to submit for a conference and a student first year report to review. The collaborators would be held up if I didn't get the results to them, and it was important to show our results at the conference. 
Within our group, I was clearly best placed to carry out the assays and write the abstract. I explained the situation to my group leader and asked whether anyone else could read the student report. She was able to find another postdoc who was glad of the experience. By prioritising and delegating, I was able to meet the deadlines for our collaborators and the conference. So which of those do you think is more convincing? The first one worries me, especially for industry, because often you wouldn't be able to work late or at weekends um, because of health and safety issues and access to the lab. The second one is an example of how you can use that STAR technique. This first part sets the situation. It's not too detailed. It doesn't talk about who the collaborator is, which conference you were going to. It just says I've got three tasks that I had to complete and they all had deadlines. The next bit talks about which parts of it you were best placed to do, the tasks that you had to achieve. This part this is the action. This is how you went about making sure you could meet the deadlines. And these are things that could well happen to industry, talking to others in the group, um, seeing whether you could prioritise, delegate, um, and that can be a way to, to solve things. And this last part, again, not huge amounts of detail, but just shows there was a successful result and that you did manage to meet the deadlines. So as we have already mentioned, you may or may not have to do a presentation, but if you do, make sure you follow the brief carefully. If you can, find out about the audience. You can always ask them um, who's going to be there. Are they going to be specialists? How much will they understand the topic already? Make sure, especially for short presentations, that you have a structure that you can follow. And whatever you do, don't run over the time allocated, but also don't cram too much in so that no one can follow it. It really is a good idea to practice, ideally with, if it's a technical presentation, with peers or colleagues. We're happy at the career service to listen to presentations, but we may not have a clue about the science that you are doing. And another good way of learning is to listen to other people presenting and see what tips you can pick up and how well you do compared to them. After the interview or the presentation, it's a good idea to reflect on how things have gone. Very few interviews go perfectly. One thing you do need to make sure, one question you need to have asked the interviewers is when you can expect to hear so that you can follow up appropriately if they don't get back to you. When you come out, try and make a note of the interviewer's names and the questions that you were asked. It's helpful for you in any future interviews. It's also very helpful to us. As I say at the bottom, do tell us um, what you were asked, because that's how we've managed to build up our bank of questions um, and the quick guide. This was an interview, an interview. It's a chance for you to think about whether you want to work there as well as a chance for them to decide whether they want you. So you might want to reflect on what you thought about the position, the people you met, the company, now that you've had a chance to get to know them better. Also think about whether there's anything you're going to want to negotiate if you get a job offer. Um, and not just salary. Do look at our negotiation guide for ideas of other things that you can negotiate. Um, leave, um, training, other things that are important to you. If you aren't successful, do ask for feedback, but 
you may not get much. If you know when the results coming through, do try and make sure you've got some support at that time because it's normal to feel a bit down if it's not a good result. And it's nice to have people with you if you've got something to celebrate. And as I've said, do feed back to the career service what you were asked to interview. So here's a summary of the ways the career service can help you preparing for interviews for R&D jobs in industry. Um, we have the booklet, which we've already mentioned, with questions that postdocs have really faced at interview. Um, and you'll find that in the Handshake Career Centre resources. We would really encourage you to practice saying your answers. It's all very well to have them in your head or to write them on a piece of paper. But at interview, you're going to have to speak. So there are a number of ways to practice and I'll put links um, below this video. You could use shortlist me. You could if there are any uh, virtual live sessions coming up, you could book to attend one of those with your peers or you could book a one to one appointment through the Handshake Career Centre. So thanks very much for listening to this series on R&D interview skills. Best of luck with the real thing. Bye bye.